Okay, hello everyone. It's great to be here today. Thanks for attending. Uh, actually, or today, I want to talk a little bit about lessons learned after one year running an OSPO. I think that one year ago at Seattle, I was talking a little bit about which ideas we had for create our open source office. And today, one year after that, I want to talk about the experience that we had, the things that actually we are working on, and which lessons learned in this year. You know? I'm Daniel, and the open source office IT leader in Bank Colombia. I'm from Colombia, and it's my Twitter, my Twitter account if you want to follow me. I think that the first step to share this experience is um, explore where is the open source office in Bank Colombia. I mean, Bank Colombia is a company with more than 3,000 people working in technology, and I think that more than 20 or 25,000 people working in general in the bank. Then where is the best place for create our open source office? I mean, it's, um, it's near of the legal team, it's better be near to the technical team, we need to report directly to our directive, so which is the best place? And in that process, I think that if you are defining your strategy, you can choose one of these one options. You can have a central team that uh, when you have different people depends on the central team, or you can uh, have a distributed team with different business units and all the people depends on the business units for work in different things. Uh, another option is HIV and Spock that it's like an enterprise service, an enterprise service, and product one, product two, product three, and um, below of that, the teams that work in different business or in different products, yeah? Actually, we choose a strategy that is called federal, state, and local, that I want to explain a little bit more. Uh, actually, we want to be a um, cloud-first bank, yeah? Then actually we are restructuring our teams. Uh, we choose, as I said previously, federal, federal, state, and local. And actually, we have as a federal teams, our cloud business office, our operations cloud um, office, our cloud, our cloud security, a cloud leadership team that reports directly to a CIO. And actually, we have a team that is called Center of Excellence. In the center of excellence, we have one that it's called developer experience management. Developer experience management is our center of excellence. Actually, um, in the developer experience manage management, we have, I think, more than six teams that I, that I want to explain in more detail. And we have state teams like FinOps, skill development, cloud plan platform, and ops engineering and we have local teams in different business units. But what is a developer experience team? Yeah, I think that it's a good question, or a DevEx. A DevEx, uh, it's a team where uh, the developers create different tools to increase engineering productivity at Bank Colombia. I mean, we are developers working for other developers. The developers of the company are our clients. And we want to educate our engineers and managers on developing best practice, tools, automations, uh, on different things. Then actually our developer experience management center of excellence have six teams. The first one is DevOps and metrics. We have teams about performance practice, uh, automated test testing practice, uh, software development practice, IT security, and the um, area that we want to explain to you today, it's our open source program office. This is a team of the developer experience management in the federal teams in Bank Colombia. Okay, and we are working in different topics in our open source program office. Uh, we have four principal topics about we are working on. The first one is migration to open source technologies that it's about migrate proprietary software to open technology. I mean, it's a bank. A bank has a lot of proprietary software, and actually we want to migrate that technologies to different open source initiatives in two ways. The first one is 
uh, how we can modernize our technologies in that migration, because actually we are migrating all our on-premise operations to the cloud, and we want to um, migrate to the cloud and to the open source technologies. Then uh, the other uh, reason is cost reduction. We want to reduce the cost that actually we pay for different license in, and for different uh, products. The second topic that actually we are working on, it's about contribution and strategy. Contribution and strategy, it's um, principally about two topics. The first one, it's about contribute and release open source software. We have, I think, more than eight projects that actually we are creating and releasing as open source. And the second one is create and support communities. We actually create and support communities in different ways. Uh, the first one is how we can create local communities for different goals. And the second one is how we can support foundations uh, that actually work in the projects that we need to use in the cloud. The third topic that we are working on is about open source government. Open source government is about how we can define different policies that apply for all the developers that actually we have in the company, and uh, we can establish metrics, tools, and different things for improve the experience of use open source in the company. Uh, it's a good place for us to speak a little bit about license, uh, which, licenses, which, which license we want to use, we, we, li we license we don't um, be using, and the last topic, it's about inner source and open source culture. And one uh, important thing to say, it's that uh, an open source in a company, it's more than the technical approach. You need to uh, work in cultural things because it's a very big challenge. Then in this, in this topic, actually we are creating our inner source portal, we are defining governance models, and actually, we um, want to work in the open first uh, thinking in their organization. Then I want to explain a little bit more in detail um, each topics. The first one, migration to open source, and which initi initiatives actually we have in order to um, achieve these goals. In migration to open source, actually we have five principal migrations. Actually, we are working with our Oracle database for migrate to PostgreSQL database. Uh, in that process, um, actually we are migrating, as I said previously, our applications from on-premise to the cloud, and we want to uh, migrate our Oracle database to PostgreSQL in AWS as a service. You know? The second um, technology that actually we are working is application servers, WebSphere application server. We are migrating that to uh, containers. Yeah, we are using EKS and we want to migrate that applications uh, that can use Open Liberty. The third one, it's about .NET. And actually we are writing different applications that was, um, or that actually exist in .NET and we are refactoring or uh, writing again uh, in different language. For example, Java and Elixir. Another one, it's Cloudant. We have different applications in IBM, and we are migrating our applications to AWS. Actually, these uh, applications use different um, service in IBM that needs to be replaced in, um, in the other cloud. Then actually, we are using CoachDB for replace the cloud and in that applications. And the last one about migration is Java. Actually, I think we have more than 27,000 um, 27, uh, people using Oracle Java in their computers, and we want to migrate that to OpenJDK. Actually, we are using Coreto. That's, um, um, that's a scenario that actually we are exploring, and we want to uh, replace that um, runtimes. And how can we work as an open source office? I mean, uh, if we have more than 3,000 people, how a team that I, that I think that have, has more, more or less um, 11 or 12 people, how can support all the teams in the company? Um, I think that um, there are different tasks that actually we have. Uh, we automate 
and uh, we, we are working in automation of migration workflows, for example, in the database. We are educating developers in open source adoption. We are supporting open source technologies. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, and, and, I say, and as I said previously, it's a bank. When you say a bank, we want to migrate proprietary software to open source, the first thing that the people think is, and what about the support? What happened with the security? Yeah, and um, it's important to say that actually we have, uh, we are working with Perforce, with OpenLogic for this side of open source support. That, that it's very useful for us because we can migrate our proprietary software. And actually we uh, work with this company for the uh, support tickets that we need. And uh, we are uh, using a strategy that is called experience-based acceleration parties. That it's a parties, it's like a hackathon. Uh, we uh, meet people three days and we define a topic, for example, sports, for example, movies or things like that. And these people define an applications to migrate in three days to uh, proprietary software, to open source database, application servers, write again a, a, a legacy applications and things like that. Then it was very useful. I recommend to you uh, that implement this strategy. It's very useful for accelerate this side of migrations and uh, it's very useful for us. And I want to share one of the architectures that actually we are using for migrate our database. Then we are using different tools for migrate proprietary, soft, proprietary database, for example, Oracle. And we are using a schema conversion tool for migrate all the structures, all the tables, views, index, and things like that for um, PostgreSQL. Then um, after that, we use AWS data, uh, the database migration service, or DMS, for migrate the data, for synchronize the data in both databases. Then actually, we are using that tools, and as a uh, open source program office, we build different cloud formations for um, be more easy that migration process. Actually, schema conversion tools, uh, it's, a, it's a tool that can uh, generate a report of compatibility. Then you can analyze your current database for Oracle, and you can um, define if it's possible to migrate to PostgreSQL, or if you need to rewrite a lot of things, then you can analyze the schema, the tables, constraints, index, sequence, and things like that. And you can define if it's a good application for migrate from Oracle to PostgreSQL. That's a good uh, tool that I think you can use for this side of migration. The, se the second topic then is contribution and strategy, which initiatives actually we have in that topic. Actually, we have a site in GitHub, github.com slash bancolombia, and we are maintaining eight tools released as open source to increase engineering productivity in Bank Colombia. Actually, we have these projects, scaffold clean architectures, reactive commons, secret, secrets manager, data mask, Java projects, Elixir, and TypeScript for different things. And I, I, I want to explain just one, the principal project that actually we have, that it's interesting that you know about it. Um, this is our site, our GitHub site. Actually, we have different projects, principally open source, because actually we have both repositories uh, service that we use in the company. I use Azure repos for all the, all the private uh, repositories that we have, but we are using GitHub for, for all the open source initiatives that actually we have. Then, uh, what is this scaffold clean architecture? It's one of the projects that we release as open source that actually is um, very useful for different developers. It's a Gradle plugin uh, to create Java and Kotlin applications based on clean architectures following our best practice. If you read about clean architecture, I think you know that it's a, a little bit difficult to implement that practice in, in a real project. Then, that's a plugin. This is a plugin for um, be more easy that um, be, be more easy uh, work with that practice of clean architecture in Java. Then um, actually we have more than um, I, I mean I could be 50 people uh, using that project, and I want to 
increase that. Um, actually, the project has different, adap different adapters for different things. For example, we have building adapters for MongoDB, for Redis, for R2DBC, KMS, and things like that. Or you can generate just with a command um, ResMBC, Webflux, GraphQL, and things like that. And we are accelerating the time to market with this type of initiatives. That's the architecture that actually we implement in these projects. It's like clean architecture, layers, domain, infrastructures, entry points, gateways, configuration source, and things that, like if you are reading about clean architecture, you can know more in detail. Uh, I want that you review all the projects that actually we have in our GitHub account if you are interested in this project. Another topic that we are working is our Bancolombia engineering block. It's a medium block when we share more than 60 posts about how we are working in Bancolombia, which technologies we are using, which um, platforms we want to use, we are exploring about open source, about blockchain, about different things that you can explore, then um, we have a lot of content in Spanish, but we have different uh, posts in English. Another achievement that we have this year is that actually uh, we be part as a silver member of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and Linux Foundation. We are very excited about it. And actually, we are uh, involved in these communities for contribute to Kubernetes. And that's the reason for our um, uh, subscription. About communities, actually, we create two communities in this year. The first one is, uh, it's called Open Talks Contribute to the Future. It's a community for uh, increase the people in Latin America that is contributing to open source then we want to um, reduce the process for contribute to open source in Latin America, and that's the principal goal of this community. The second community is Elixir Colombia, that it's a local community for improve our knowledge in this language that actually is really important for us. We are using Elixir for different things in the company, and that community is for increase the knowledge in that. The third one is government. Then in government, um, we have different things. Actually, we are implementing a tool that, it's called, that is called Scorecards Strategy, that it's a proposal of the Open Source uh, Security Foundation. And actually, if you see our, um, if you see our, oh, sorry a moment. If you see our GitHub account, you can explore different things about this tool. Just give me a moment for this login. And I want to show you some details. Actually, all our open source projects have a workflow for security. Then we have in the GitHub folder, we have workflows and we have a scorecard analysis. A scorecard analysis, it's um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a task for analyze security in the project. Then with this workflow that it's open source, you can review it in detail, uh, you will have a security report about different things in the project. Then you will have code scanning alerts about core review, token permissions, dependency, and things like that. And you can review one of the uh, alerts in detail and you can see um, all the description, you can show more details about re the remediations and things like that. Uh, I think that it's a really useful tool for security in open source projects and actually we are implementing that for our initiatives. Um, okay. And actually we are exploring four features in the advanced security licensing GitHub about code scanning, about secret scanning, about dependency review with Dependabot, and security overview that, that are features that actually we are exploring in order to improve our security ecosystem, then that's the reason we're exploring that. Another initiative that, are, that we implement this year is the chaos metrics. Actually, we have a dashboard in Grafana 
for um, show different metrics of the KS project. It's about, for example, uh, which are the principal contribu contributors to our projects, or which are the languages that are actually more using, or for example, where is the pull request activity in any specific projects, things for analyze the health or the healthy of your community. Uh, I think chaos metrics, it's a good option if you want to implement that. Uh, another um, tools, tool that actually we have in the open source program office is the radar uh, of, of technology. I don't know, anyone here know about ThoughtWorks radar? Yeah? Uh, actually, this is a fork of the uh, technology radar, yeah? powered by ThoughtWorks. Then we fork that project and use um, and customize for um, our own technologies. Then we define tools, language, platforms, and techniques that we want to implement uh, and we define this uh, for adopt, and you can see the description for, the, for this tool. Uh, it's very useful, or for example, uh, things like trial or technologies that you need to hold in different ways, in tools, in la language and frameworks, in techniques, in, plat in platforms. It's a, it's a good option if you want to be, if you want to have more government of the technologies that you want to use in your company, recommendations and things that can apply for different things in, 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 different, um, in different business units. Then actually for us, it's very useful. I want that you can explore that project if you have um, a need for a government in your open source uh, projects. And the last one in the last topic that I want to talk about, it's about inner source and open source culture. Then Inner source and open source culture, actually we implement our inner source portal. This inner source portal, it's a fork of the SAP project about um, inner source portal then. Thanks, thanks SAP for that. And actually we use and we customize uh, for Bank Colombia and we have different um, projects in the inner source strategy. We want to implement, for example, Bank Columbia design system that is like a bootstrap or, or like material uh, for our internal projects. We want that the people contribute to this internal project and that uh, we can have different features, not just for one team, yeah, it's for all the company. And actually we are sending to all the company uh, an open source culture newsletter that is a strategy that we, had, that we are using for uh, show the people in the company what's happening with the open source, you know? Um, what is happening with open source in Bank Colombia, which version we are releasing of the projects that we are maintaining, which, and not, which other projects that we are releasing as open source and things like that. Uh, it's a good option for work in the culture of the company and um, it, it has been useful for us. That's all I, that I want to talk today. Um, remember that uh, Derek Cobb, it's my Twitter account if you want to follow me. And thanks for your time. Thanks for attending. You have any question? Uh, thank you. Good presentation. And looks like you're making really great progress in, in just one year. So I'm curious if you can talk about how do you get there? You know, a year ago, how do you work with your management to make a decision to form an, o an OSPO? Uh, what convinced them? How, how do you justify that? And then similar to that question, what made you uh, sponsor CNCF, right? What was the decision making to, to get you know, management approving that? Sure, to the first question, I think that it's important explain that in numbers. I mean, uh, we need a sponsor that invest in our open source program office and the principal uh, topic for that is migration to open source. It's the efficiency that we can make migrating proprietary software to open source. That's the principal, principal reason for our by presidents, for our, our directives, yeah? Uh, they are really interested in work, in contribution, in government, in inner source, but the principal reason for, for, they, for them is um, 
cost reduction. Yeah, then that's the principal reason for us. Migrate to proprietary software to open source in order to, to reduce the cost that actually we have. And the second question about CNCF, uh, the principal reason is, is because we want to work directly with the communities. We want to work and contribute to Kubernetes and the other projects that actually the CNCF uh, are uh, graduating. Yeah? Then we want to support the technologies that actually are really important for us. We are migrating all our operations from on-premise to the cloud, and it's really important for us that projects like Kubernetes, uh, Prometheus, Jagger, and things like that uh, uh, has the support, the, the correctly support, and that's, uh, that's the reason for, for us. Yeah. Thanks for your question. Any other question? Hey, Daniel. Thank you very much for your presentation today. Really useful. Uh, I'd like to know how do you conciliate decision, technical decision, uh, across other uh, tech teams in your company? I, I mean, uh, could you please tell us uh, a really high level uh, how was the process to to define the tools that you we are going to use to replace the proprietary software? Sure. I I think that it's really important. Um, explore which are the tools that actually your company is paying more. Yeah, uh, which are the proprietary software that you can migrate for a efficient cost reduction. If you migrate an application that uh, technically could be uh, difficult, but if you uh, explain the details in in the in the cost reduction and it's just a little bit, could be not a good option. I mean, it's better if you can um, define the, the tools that you want to migrate in order to uh, generate a good efficiency, yeah? And technically, it's important work with the teams that is, relating to, that is related to that technologies for work in the compatibility, for example, and not just cost reduction decisions. Uh, I mean, it's important the cost, but it's important the technical compatibility of that tools. Then I think that it's important to um, relate both criteria, the cost reduction and the technical compatibility of that, of, of that uh, tools. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So what sort of, uh, what sort of obstacles have you found? What have been once you got into the place where you were, you had an OSPO, what was the most unexpected thing that was difficult? Sure. I think that, for example, the contribution to open source. Yeah? Because in the company, actually, we are more... Um, the, the developers explore tools, adopt best practice, but mm, don't dedicate a lot of time in contribute to open source, yeah? Then when you create an open source office and you say to people, yeah, we, we need to use technology, we need to adopt best practice, but we want to contribute to that technologies. It's, it's a different way to, to see the technology, yeah? I think that it's one of the most important. And, and another one, it's about migration, because uh, as, I, as I said previously, it's a bank, and the people that you need to say you need to migrate that technology to another one. It's people that work with that technology for 20 years. Yeah. Then when you say that people, you need to migrate that, it's like, a, what? <laughs> I like this technology, you know? And that's a little bit difficult. And I think that it's more a cultural challenge. Yeah. And we are working on that. And the people actually are doing, are doing that. But it's a really a difficult challenge. Yeah. Uh I have a question regarding the team. Um, how many uh, developers you have like are at active contributors to any open source project, like maintainers or like like having active roles in the in the open source uh, projects? Sure. Actually, in the open source office, we have uh, we are thirteen people. Yeah, but we have other teams in the developer experience management. Uh, this. This one, 
And this one, Developer Experience Management Team, that it's six teams, really, that actually are contributing to open source in different ways. For example, performance or DevOps or security practice. Then I think that it's like uh, 13 people, 30 people, uh, something like that. That it's just a little bit in technology because we have more than 3,000 people working in technology. But, it, but, I, but I think that it's a first step. Another, que another question? Okay, thanks for your time. <laughs>